Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to, well, an unplanned video. In last episode you saw me talking about a 5k budget to buy a cool car for the channel, which was very much my intention. However, what's happened today was not my intention, it was a genuine mistake and I've now ended up with a very, very cheap Copart car, which we'll see in a second. It actually just turned up and so let me take you through the whole story when I'd realised the mistake I'd made to the car turning up today. Enjoy. Okay, so the situation is that I accidentally inputted max bid 500 on this Audi TT. I've never used Copart before and I, I assumed that either you needed to have some money in your account or it would sort of say there'd be a confirm page after hitting max bid, but I pressed it. And so now I'm winning the auction. It's number 92 and we're currently on 88. And at the moment, I mean, no one else has moved on it at all. So I'm Bonus very time. scared that we're about to win this Audi TT with a very uh, skeptical, well, questionable. It's just a questionable car. I don't want it, but Bonus I feel time. like I might have accidentally bought it because I'm an idiot. Why am I like this? I'm absolutely, absolutely terrified. It's a 2004 Audi TT with the 1.8 engine. I don't know if it's the BAM 225 or not. It's got 137,000 miles. It's got an MOT until June, but all the advisories on the last MOT are bad and so i bid 500 quid accidentally but i i i don't think anyone's going to bid above that i can't believe i've done this okay here comes the audi tt oh no sold oh no oh no oh no oh no oh you're joking i can't believe this i can't believe i've done this oh Sold on approval. Oh no. Okay, so no one else bid on the car as we expected. It says on here that it didn't hit the reserve. The seller's reserve was £900. And uh, my max bid that I'd inputted was 475 And obviously that's what it went for. So I'm just hoping that the seller doesn't accept my max bid. And that all of this will go away. This is the car then, it's red, it's a manual, it has the black interior, two seats in the back, it has an engine in it, which is always helpful, 137,914 miles, the car runs, there's no apparent warning light, it says here that it's got a discrepancy, but on the HPI it actually didn't. And yeah, all sorts of cosmetic defects. It looks like a load of, I don't know if it's just moss or if it's actually surface rust all along the top here. Well, that's it. Yeah, I, 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 oh gosh. Well, surprise, surprise, I did indeed win the car. The seller first counter offered £600, which of course I rejected before then coming down to my bid at 475 and accepting it. However, my total to pay is 799.45 because Copart charge you fees and you have to have your car delivered or you have to collect it on a flatbed trailer, which I do not own. So yeah, I guess the next thing then is to see what state this thing's in when it turns up. Okay, well, this then has just turned up came off a uh, big transporter truck with copart written on the side of it and it's just been dropped off here all i've been given is this cable tie with two keys on which is good i didn't know it had two keys actually i think it said it had one and obviously i'm extremely eager to have a look at well, what we've ended up with so it is a 2004 late 2004 audi tt it's a coupe it's a 1.8 
However, unfortunately, it's not the 225. And the way I actually worked that out is uh, High Peak Autos mentioned to me that uh, the 225 would have had a twin exhaust here at the back, whereas this just has a singular one. And looks a little bit wonky, doesn't it? But it's a 1.8, it's the, the standard one. So I think around 185 or 190 horsepower. And uh, from a distance, it, it looks okay. It's obviously red and it's in need of a very, very good clean. And if you'd like to see me clean it, let me know and I'll do that in the next video. Still got the number plates taped up there. Let's have a look inside. See paint peeling away there. Wow. This is so cool. Although I absolutely couldn't believe that I'd done this. Uh, completely, stupidly, accidentally bid on a car that I didn't even want. I have to say, looking in this interior, I feel like it's a good idea. So we've got a manual gearbox. It's a five speed manual, but I love the gator that it's in. That looks fantastic. Handbrake and up here, ah, we do have heated seats and these pop out like that. I think you twist them. Such a cool Audi design. Uh, we've got the original radio in there with TT over the top. That works fine. We've got a glove box, Let's have a look. Looks, well, it's very spacious actually. Uh, a bit dirty, of course. And this being a TT, you also have two seats in the back, which um, is, a, is a bonus, really. But yeah, look at the absolute state of this thing. It is really, really filthy. Nice little storage unit there. Again, that's still working. Still got the cigarette lighter in there as well, actually. Wow. Hmm. So far, not so bad at all. Obviously, just got the V5 on the seat. That's all I was told. He gave me the keys and said, V5's on the seat. Down here, we've got whatever documentation comes in the car, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Let's sit inside, though, shall we? And have a proper look. Same situation on this door handle here. Just lots of paint, sort of. Yeah, it's not in the best condition at all, is it, the paintwork? But, like I say, maybe we should clean this up and see how it looks. I love that aluminium filler cap, that's cool. Okay, let's take a step inside my Audi TT. <laughs> I cannot believe I've, I've done this. This is the first Audi that I've actually ever owned. See, I've been lucky enough to experience lots of Audis thanks to Audi UK Press, but I've never actually owned one myself. You'll have to excuse my shorts and sandals. It's a warm day today. So, of course, manual. We've got three pedals down there. Nice, uh, I don't know if it is actually aluminium, but nice finish on them. I think we've probably got an OBD port down there as well, which I will probably plug my Carly into and have a look. Steering wheel not in bad condition. Like I say, we've got all of this. I love these two-tone seats, actually. It's sort of a fabric material in the middle and leather elsewhere. And here's the boss pulling back up from work. She's shaking her head, but she's smiling. Oh, is that a look of disappointment? Oh, dear. Oh, I think I'm in trouble, everyone. I think I'm in big trouble. Now that look you just gave me, was that a look of disgust or a look of mm. sort of reluctant oh. approval? Um, well, from afar it actually looks quite nice. Closer up it's a bit dirty. Closer up it, it can do with the clean. Yeah. Look at it though. Wait, let me get in. I'm not going to lie, oh. I'm already obsessed with it. Really? I love this gearbox. You love it? And look at the heated seats. It's got heated seats <laughs> and they're like this, look, you push it and then you twist it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's quite nice. I need to see if they that? work actually, I don't know if they, that's ESP, that's for the traction control. Look at that. TT, oh, nice. air conditioning, need to see if that works of course. Do you know? The electric window works, I just did that. Yeah. So that's good. But does it go back up? I should probably see if the engine actually switches on, I haven't done that yet. Have you not? Have you, has this just arrived? It literally just arrived. I literally just got in the car and I was just <laughs> filming the inside and you just pulled up. I haven't even started it yet. I don't, I have no idea. I quite like it, you know. So the guy from Copart, he just turns up. Yeah. Drops it off. He says, yeah. 
Here's the keys. Oh, wow. The V5's on the passenger seat. That's it. And then he leaves. That's it. Love it. It's quite good then. And it's got two rear seats. Well, does it? For your little legs, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not in trouble? No. Good. I think it looks good. <laughs> Okay, well, we ought to start it though. So, uh, like I say, two keys here. This one seems to be the one that's being used. So let's just go with that. Um, I know it it runs because it says runs and drive on the listing, but also the chap that just delivered it drove it off the low loader. Okay, so we've got a beep, but I think that's for low fuel. Let's give it a turn, shall we? Wow. Wow, revs are really smooth. Wow, okay, I'm actually really surprised by that. It's It feels really, yeah, it doesn't feel like there's any misfires or anything at all. So what have we got here? Trip computer, so the mileage, there you go, 137,914 miles. The car still thinks it's September 2003. And we've got apparently 75 miles of range, 37.6 miles per gallon average. Wow, maybe this thing's really good on fuel. Okay, 37.1 there. 37 miles per gallon, that'll be, well, maybe this will end up being my new daily driver then if uh, if it does 37 miles per gallon. At the moment, I am dailying the Jaguar S type and that is 23, 24 miles per gallon. So, okay, uh, right, so here we go. So if we've got, What's working then? Actually, first off, I'm going to see if the air conditioning works because it's really hot. It's auto, low. Oh, wow, that's, oh yeah. That is ice cold. No way. Again, that's more than can be said for the Jaguar because the, the air conditioning doesn't work in that at the moment. Okay, uh, heated seat, I think you turn them like that. Yeah, it's gone red, Let's see if that works. Little bit of a wobble on the revs when I turned that on. Wow, so the air's really cool. I'll turn that off so that you guys can hear me. Well, let's, oh, that just meant it came out of my feet. Wow, I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely really, I don't want to jinx it because I haven't driven the thing yet, but. I'm really happy with it. And yeah, look at that, very dirty obviously, but even the headlining is in good condition. What does that say? If this car is in the way, call me. Interesting. The interior light works, that's good. Oh, we've got a vanity mirror with the light working. All I've got on here at the moment is an airbag light. Everything else seems to have gone off apart from fuel. Just got airbag. Uh, it does seem to be switched on in there. Okay, got light switches. No warning lights come on when I turn them on, so that's good. And electric windows. All oh, these switch, these are really cool switches actually, I like that. Let's see if they go down. That one does. Should we try the driver's side? Yes. Fantastic. I think these are electric mirrors as well, so maybe we can see if they work. Yep. Oh my goodness, guys, I can't actually believe this. Everything I've tried so far is working. Absolutely everything. And uh, I should mention that this car's got a uh, MOT on it until, I think it's the end of, end of June. Um, we're currently, as, as I'm filming this, as the car's arrived, I think it's 15th of, of May today. So it's got about six weeks of an MOT on it. And I have some plans. I was thinking if my plan is to just use it up until the MOT and then scrap it, I might take it, try and take it to the Nürburgring with Charlie, my podcast co-host, because he's always wanted to do a lap on the Nürburgring and now we could have our own car to take. So if I maybe put some insurance and tax on this thing and, and drive it and think that it's safe and, and good enough for that, then maybe we take it over to Germany. Is that a terrible idea? Uh, I can confirm though, the heated seat absolutely works. That is ferociously hot. 
which is just how I like it. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, obviously we're on the handbrake, that works fine. I'm keen to have a look in the back, but I don't know. Ah, is that how you get in there, or is this lever? Yep. So we've got some old mats, very dirty. I'm just intrigued to see what this is. No way. Storage. They got that on the other side as well, I can't see. Yes, it does. And the, uh, apart from all the, you know, dust and sand and leaves and stuff, um, these seats are in really good, remarkably unworn condition. Even the seat belts are very unworn. I'm genuinely shocked. I'm genuinely as shocked as I was to find that I'd won this car. I'm the same amount of shocked to find how good a condition it seems to be in. I have to say, initially just being in this Audi, the only other Audis I've experienced are all the new ones, and just the fit and finish and build quality, seemingly, as I notice a piece of trim that's come undone from the stitches, uh, seemingly all seems to be really spot on, like just the heated seat buttons, which I'm gonna turn off actually, because it's really hot. Just the action of pressing the heated seat button, the way this feels, the way you adjust the temperature like that. This thing here, so it's like a cover for that. It's all just really nicely, just feels really nicely designed and put together. And it goes into every gear and that gearbox feel is really nice as well. Uh, only thing, I've we'll just spotted this, it's obviously a piece of trim. We'll have another look at the outside uh, in a second. We'll have a look under the bonnet and uh, in the back as well. What I do want to do after that is have a look at what we've got in here. I have to say, I did just notice on here, number of former keepers, only three. Only three former keepers. I think that's, that's another bonus as well, isn't it? Just quickly before we have a look outside and then the boot and under the bonnet and all that, I'm just gonna plug in my Carly adapter here. I just looked it up, the uh, port is hidden. Just under, there it is. I think that's gone in. Okay, I've got my Carly app up on my old phone here. There it is, look, Audi TT 2004. Luckily, or should I say unluckily, it's not one of these ones, the newer shape. But nonetheless, if I just start the car up again. Okay, all good. Then now I should be able to connect. That thing's down there flashing. If I click connect, then it should hopefully just uh, link up with the car, which would be really cool. Okay, so we're connected and you can do things like coding, live data. I just very quickly want to run a diagnostics on this car because obviously it's brand new to me and I have no idea what other problems might be uh, underlying. So let's just let it do its thing. You can tell that the car is doing something because the ABS and traction lights keep flashing on and off. There it is, look. And I also can't quite believe this, but look, it says 100% of systems checked so far and one issue found. Now, can I just give you, wow, literally just one. Air conditioning. Positioning mode to V68. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that means at all, but seriously, just one issue. Wow, okay. <laughs> I can't quite believe that, because for reference, when I did like a code read on my old BMW 7 Series or Range Rovers, even when there is nothing apparently wrong with them. There would be 20, 30, maybe 40 fault codes. So that is, again, tremendously surprising. This car is full of surprises. Um, yeah, anyway, that, that Carly thing's very cool. Great that you can just literally connect it to your phone, plug it in any car with an OBD2 port. It does vary what you can do depending on what car you have. But I'll leave a link below if you're interested in, in checking it out or getting one for yourself. Okay, apparently that's all cleared now. Very good. Anyway, let's uh, move on. So in here then, let's try the boot. And is that the filler cap? I bet we can see that pop up from here. Yep, there it goes. Let's have a little look uh, around the car then, shall we? Let's just see what's in the back and what's in the front too. Just gently rest that there. 
I'm gonna actually just put this window down just in case it decides to lock itself for whatever reason. Yeah, so that's really properly grimy, isn't it, in there? Let's definitely do a nice clean on this. This will all clean up really well, I think. There we go. All of this stuff, look at all of that. And is this stuff, I don't, I don't know if this is just like bedded in dust or, or what, but I think that might clean off, you know. I don't think it's actually bad on the paint. It seems to be okay around this windscreen. Let's have a look. Katie said there was a weird painted R on the back of the car, by the way, which I haven't spotted. Where is that? Oh, this thing. That's just from the auction company. Let's see if we can open this up. Wow. Clean-ish. And I've just noticed that these really tabs to put the rear seats down. No way. Oh my goodness, this Audi TT man was not expecting this at all, but obviously this is a really practical car if you can put those seats down. So you've got a warning triangle in there, see if there's anything here. We've got, is there a wheel in here? No way, surely not. Surely there's not actually a wheel in here. I'm not sure there is. I, I, I'll have a look another time and I'll update you on that. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna put it all off now because uh, I need two hands really, but again, more stuff in here, original, than I really would have expected at all. And can I just reiterate, I paid 475 pounds for this car, not including the fees. The fees were, I think, 220 odd, which took me to 700, and then the delivery was 100. So, um, 800 quid all in, but the actual cost of the car, 475 quid. I cannot, I cannot quite believe it. Having said that, I've not driven the thing yet, and we should probably have a quick look at what's under the bonnet. I like this spoiler, it's very cool. I'm really excited by this, guys. I'm really excited. I've always fancied one of these Audi TTs. Now, I noticed this was an MOT advisory. was that the projection from the lights was non-existent, and I'd imagine that's largely to do with these headlights being so glazed over. But I reckon if we get a machine polisher on that, we might be able to bring those back a little bit. More blemishes and stuff there. Audi badge is nice and original. It's not been changed to one of those horrible black ones. The wheels like I haven't even looked at the wheels they're original got really good tread on that front tire I don't know what it is it's a Sa Sailmin so I think that's a budget tire on there rear tire different brand I think Antona Antares good trim it's probably good trim good tread probably about half worn I'd say same on this side because they're only 205 section tires as well so they're not particularly wide and therefore they're not going to be expensive to replace but they don't need it you know these are all all plenty plenty of tread on them but i think i found where that red piece of trim comes from in the car have a quick look <laughs> i have a feeling yep what do you reckon? Bit of Gorilla Glue for that, do you think? Okay, we should probably check up the here now. Nah, I should probably do the bonnet catch, shouldn't I? There we go. And that works, that's brilliant. All right. That is, again, I have to say, that looks remarkably clean. Should probably have a look under there in a second, but that is really clean. Is that the window? Wow, that's a very strange place for the window. Wind, windscreen washer fluid. It's like outside of the engine bay. So again, all of this stuff is just going to clean up really well. I'd like to have this off and check the uh, air filter maybe we'll do a service on it or something. I should probably look at the service history. That'll be the next thing. 
but um, visually speaking, this is very clean. Very, very clean. Wow. Oh, okay. Put that back in there. Tell you what, let's switch the engine off, give it a little bit of a break. Um, but that's quite a promising start, I have to say. The only thing I don't like looking outside the car is that exhaust pipe looks bent. It's definitely not, uh, it's definitely off centre. So um, I, I'm not sure about that. And also if you do, and I'm sure you guys will uh, look at the last MOT and its advisories. I think some of the advisories were to do with some corrosion under the car and potentially uh, exhaust heat shield missing or something. Nothing too major, but uh, yeah, obviously most of the story of any used bargain car is normally when you get it up on a ramp, but at least I can have my moment of relief and happiness right now because the thing flipping starts, it runs really well and um, enough that I think I'll probably stick some tax and, and insurance on it. I mean, I'll, I'll do that anyway, I think, because just out of curiosity. But yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll give it a little drive. Maybe we'll do that in, in the next video. But before we end this one, let's just have a quick look down here because we've got a couple of bags. We've got a Wilco's bag here, which... What's that? Oh my goodness, is that a... Uh... Uh, with me? No way. No way. That is a... Wow. That's an original booklet. And look at the condition of it. Okay, so this car hasn't been completely neglected then. I do wonder why it's ended up at Copart. We've got, yes, we've got an Audi, oh wow, Audi service record. So this has got, uh, the delivery inspection was done at South Hereford Audi. So the first service was done at South Hereford Audi, uh, 17,000 miles in June of 2006. We had another one in uh, 2007 to, at 27,000 miles. Then it didn't have another one then until 2010, but it had only completed a further 6,000 miles. Another service in 2011 at 42. This is a different, this is a non-main dealer, so I presume it had changed ownership at this point. Uh, maybe to the second owner. 2014, it had a service. 2015, 2016. And it recommended a brake fluid change at the next service, which did they do that? doesn't look like they did and here's okay so there's a huge gap here 2016 at 75,000 miles they recommended to change the held x and brake fluid on the next service but they didn't service it again until 2019 and it had done 40,000 miles and they were just did literally an oil service and that's it i think this thing's definitely due a service should I decide to, well, sell it or, or move it or keep it, should I say, for myself. It's going to want a service. So we've got a whole nother booklet in here. This is, you know what, this is actually, if you ever get the chance to just buy a really cheap car, I think even if it doesn't run, <laughs> don't take my word for it, but it's kind of fun. Just like, it's like a bit like that storage hunters program, isn't it? Where you just don't know what's going to be behind the... So these are the manuals for the radio, which actually, you know what? I noticed on the radio, it's got a uh, thing that comes up saying it's, um, there you go, safe. Which I would imagine needs a code for me to unlock that, which will probably be in there. Yeah, so it's again, a completely unmarked and original Audi booklet. I'm, I'm incredibly surprised by this. And oh wow, and there's a whole nother bag here of receipts which you know what i'm not going to go through entirely now because i think you've all probably fallen asleep by this point but what do you think i mean i don't know about you i'm impressed i'm very very impressed i uh, am extremely excited by this car now which i wasn't to be honest i was terrified by it so so far so good i'll probably tax and insure this thing and um see what it's like on the road and maybe I'll, I'll do a, an update video to see what it's like to drive if you're interested by the way do let me know because 
like I said, I didn't plan on buying this Audi TT. And so it may well be something you're not interested in in the slightest. But if you are, let me know and I'll do some extra videos with it. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Do subscribe if you want to see more content with this Audi TT. You'll be seeing a update with the Jag. Well, it's not an update, actually. It's me doing the brakes on the Jag coming very soon, uh, as well as a trip to the Nürburgring. Not with this yet, but in another special Audi. So do stay tuned to the channel and I'll see you all very, very soon.